Hello, everybody. Jasper speaking. Welcome to the weekly charting analysis webinar. We've got the risk warning on the screen. We're going to zoom through that and then get into the webinar. Any uh, any questions on the the sound or the quality of the 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 visual here? Just um, just send me a chat message and indeed anything on uh, any questions that you have on the market. Then again, please just uh, send a message through either the Q and A box or the chat box, and I'll uh, answer as best I can. So this could be uh, this could prove to be a pretty decisive week in uh, in markets, and so definitely a good one for for trading. So as I'm sure you're probably all aware, we've got the ECB decision this week, and so there's been a lot of dovish talk from the ECB. Uh, Governing Council members, particularly the President Mario Draghi, suggesting that there's going to be some sort of extra stimulus announced this week. <clears throat> now, if we jump over to our euro dollar chart, you know we can see that uh, since March, steady kind of trend higher, peaked out around the 117 uh, mark, and then just since mid October. Last six weeks, just absolutely tanked in the the euro dollar here. Lost, um, you know, lost uh, lost ten ten major handles um, uh, here. Uh, yeah, thousand pips just in in six weeks. So been a been a great trade if you've been short. Now, obviously, at this point, the trade gets a little less obvious uh, because we are approaching this 105 mark. And that's uh, you know the reason I'm mentioning them bringing up this chart specifically is I think this is something that's indirectly being targeted by the by the ECB. They want a lower euro exchange rate. Um, obviously, the benchmark is against the dollar, but also against the pound, and that's also been happening. You know, they uh, you know inflation is not as low as it was when the QE first uh, QE was first introduced in March. Um, there's not actually any deflation at the moment, according to the latest CPI figures, um, and, and growth and business sentiment seem to be gradually improving in Europe. So, you know, this is really just trying to push down the exchange rate and, uh, and speed up speed up the recovery that way. Um, obviously, in the process, it sends the euro crashing, as we mentioned, but it also sends asset prices flying. So, at that point, at this juncture, we can flip across to our Germany 30 chart, our proxy for the the German DAX equity index benchmark, and we can see that um, here we're up at three-month highs in German stocks, the top 30 German stocks, uh, the best levels since since August, uh, bef you know, pretty much before the uh, the crash uh, when China devalued their currency. And so, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, these these two charts are not a coincidence. It's, uh, you know, the main contributing factor here is this ECB meeting this week, and so that's on Thursday. Um, and so, unlike on previous occasions where the actual interest rates have been a bit of a non-issue, and we've really been waiting for the press conference, uh, not so much this time. We're actually looking for a possible cut to the deposit rate. It's actually consensus amongst economists that there will be some cut. So pay attention to that data release at um, at 12:30, and then you will have the um, the press conference about an hour later, in which. Any further announcements will probably be made in terms of either expanding how long they'll be buying bonds. So right now they're buying 60 billion euros a month, and that's supposed to end in September 2016. They may say that that's going to end in September 2017. So obviously that means overall they're going to have bought a lot more bonds. Um, they could do that, or they could just increase the amount they're buying each month. So maybe from 60 billion euros to 70 billion euros. Uh, consensus is for the former. So if they do actually increase the monthly purchases, that would be a big positive surprise, and I think the net result of, the, of, uh, of this, this chart that we're looking at would be a, uh, a big spike higher. And uh, back over to that euro chart, I think the result of any extra purchases per month being announced would probably mean a drop through this uh, this multi-year low that we placed back in March beneath 105, and I think that could be the catalyst to send the euro back down to parity from the dollar. But that said, I don't actually think that's probably going to happen. 
um, you know, like I said, there, there isn't really the the data in place to justify such heavy-handed moves. Um, some of the member countries, particularly Germany, are really not in favour of these. So um, even though it doesn't require consensus to do this, you know, um, I don't think the internal politics of the ECB is going to allow some really drastic policy when you know, when some of the members are really against it. So it's going to be an interesting one. Um, it's really going to dictate direction. Now, the other one, uh, the other couple of considerations we got here, both taking place on Friday. Uh, one is the, the jobs report. Obviously, it's the first Friday of the month. Um, and then we've also got the OPEC decision on whether they're going to cut production of oil, basically. Um, you know, yeah, it's tricky when it comes to the jobs report. Let's jump over to the um, the US 30. This is our proxy for the Dow Jones, obviously. I've mentioned in the chart forum here that we're still in this kind of double top or not territory here. Here's the first uh, loop on the double top. Does it turn into this and a breakdown? Or do we just break higher from here and make new higher highs? And we're not far off uh, the record high territory. So that was um, in May. So, you know, we you know break higher from here. Yes, there's a few peaks involved, and we'll probably take a little while to get there, but you know that would be a strong indication that we're going to be able to get there up to the 18400 type territory because <clears throat> uh, this is 18,000 basically where where we're finding resistance at the moment. Um, so you know the, whether this pattern plays out or not, I would say it's got a good amount of dependence firstly on the ECB but then also you know that's probably going to create some sort of action in and around this line we could get a false break depending on some scenario of the ECB and then a push lower or maybe just a break and a continuation if both those reports are kind of favorable to markets what is going to be favorable to markets for the jobs report you know I think that um, you know it's, it's a tricky one it's either good data is good or good data is bad, you know. So if we have a, I think probably the easiest one to call is when we have a good report which isn't crazily good. Nothing that's going. What we don't want uh, from a market perspective in terms of markets going higher, what we don't want is some really exceptionally strong jobs report that suggests that actually the Fed's going to change its language a bit and uh, maybe it's not going to be just a uh, one interest rate hike followed by a few months of uh, taking a break and then maybe one or two next year. Maybe it's going to be a faster pace of tightening because the economy is growing stronger than thought. So we want this kind of Goldilocks job report where it's not too hot, not too cold. Something in the region of sort of 250,000 jobs created, I think, keeps the markets happy. The economy is doing well, but it's not so well that the Fed really needs to go nuts tightening, tightening uh, rates a lot of times next year. Um, so it should it be a really weak number, I think, you know, that, that could weigh on markets, and I think if it's a really strong number, that could weigh on markets. Uh, so we're looking for that middle ground is, is how I'm interpreting things here. Weak number obviously just implies the economy is too weak to handle a rate cut, which uh, would a rate hike, sorry, which um, seems almost inevitable at this point, given the language of the, uh, the Fed officials. So we touched on uh, some of this sort of um, main currencies. Yeah, I did mention OPEC. General thought here is that they're not going to cut production. You know, obviously the general logic being here that if they do decide to cut supply, sort of general supply and demand um, curves that you deal with in economics would, would tell you that a lower supply would mean demand could perhaps outstrip supply and that would generally push prices higher. At the very least, even if um, demand is not outstripping supply, still it will be slightly better aligned. At the moment, you know, there's too much supply to uh, – it, it, the market's oversupplied. We know the, the level of demand, given the, the slowdown in China, is not justifying how much oil we're producing. So um, still the feeling is that probably – let me just pull up this oil chart while I'm chatting about it. Um, Brent is the one that you know would have some has the most influence by uh, OPEC, but obviously WTI pretty correlated. Where we're sitting at Brent at the moment, uh, definitely a pretty pivotal level. So we we pushed down here, down to the multi-year lows. We didn't quite, according to the the cash price, uh, we didn't make multi-year lows. Um, if you look at the front month futures, we actually did. So a little confusing there, obviously, when you trade futures. Um, 
I would just pay attention to the cash price. What we're considering here is that um, the market just, you know, it hasn't been a massive rally higher. We had those geopolitical tensions around the, the Paris attacks, which was justification for buying oil, but really it's just a bit of a little, a little bounce off the lows because markets weren't able to push them into multi-year lows um, before we knew what was going to happen at this OPEC meeting. Um, but I suspect they're not going to do anything, and what we're getting here is a support turned into resistance um, and then a, a drop. That's my default scenario. I think in the meantime, before we get to Friday, we could get another little run up to here um, just to kind of test the uh, the willingness of buyers to take it through those highs, but I don't think they're going to be too willing. Um, still, while above this low, we are in a kind of range-bound environment, so, you know, those buying off the lows down here, it's been a good trade so far, and it's not to say that we can't push further up into the range, but I think you'll see that, you know, uh, these are kind of lower highs that are being formed here, lower lows. It's a trend inside a bigger channel, which looks probably, you know, it's all probabilities here. Obviously, we don't know for sure, but I would say probabilities favor, favor this downtrend pushing out through the bottom of this, this channel that we're in at the moment. Um, but that, you know, that we haven't broken yet. So, you know, we'll just, we're just looking to what uh, seems the most likely. Something to keep an eye on is this declining RSI trend line here. Um, you know, this has worked quite well on these previous two peaks. If we get a push through there, then above the 50 in RSI, that is a slightly different dynamic, and that could carry us back up maybe to 48, um, you know, back a bit above the, the 61.8 level here. Um, but I'm not entirely convinced it can take us all the way back to 50, but it certainly could. So, um, the conclusion here, if OPEC do cut production, um, then um, then that would be pretty unexpected and we could expect a uh, seriously large price move in Brent and, and WTI. Uh, but probably they're not going to, and it might come down to the, the language. You know, maybe they can sort of um, twist the language to suggest that it's still, you know, on the cards that they could, and that they're going to be determined to like support the market. These kinds of uh, that kind of rhetoric could be supportive of the price, but I think overall the, t the trending commodities is lower, and you probably don't want to try and outsmart that at the moment, particularly from a day trading perspective. You know, deep-pocketed long-term investor, maybe. Um, day trading, to my mind, no. So since we were just talking about this, let's have a look at um, WTI as well. <clears throat> Similar looking idea here. You can see we didn't get quite as close on the cash price, kind of bounce off this breakout area here. Uh, but a similar thing in terms of, um, you know, there was our support, uh, bounced into it, bounced again, and now we're kind of rolling off with a little bit of a bounce today. <clears throat> Probably not going to go too far, I'd imagine, um, before the OPEC meeting. Now let's just get uh, more in depth into the uh, the major indices. We have a look at the US 30. Let's look at the uh, the UK 100 here. <clears throat> this is a short term chart. Uh, this is a well shortish four hour chart. Uh, what you can see here is that as of last week, we bounced off this um, what was potentially a down sloping trend line. It was confirmed here. And then actually, um, this this line I didn't draw into today. I actually did draw this in last week before it retested it here. Um, just because it was, to me, it was one of those levels that we had the strong momentum. If we were going to hold above this area, this was what could take us pretty quickly back through the rising trend line. And, uh, and as it happens, um, you know, that actually that line worked pretty perfectly. Um, it was basically just those short-term lows. You know, that's the logic of the trend is, you know, if you can hold the short-term lows, um, then you're still kind of strictly speaking in an uptrend. And so that's, that's worked out nicely. We're pushing back into the trend line. I would suggest, given the, the speed of the return to the trend line, we're probably going to get a push through higher. But if we do pull out to the longer term perspective, for a longer term perspective here, we can see that um, we are trending higher. We've got the higher low here. Um, here's the high. We're in the process of building a higher here, higher high here. We just need to 
get through this declining trend line to take us back up to, I would say, firstly the 6450 kind of area, um, and then the uh, the, the peak uh, that we reached in in October, around sort of just beneath the 6500 level. But again, it's one of those where we're, in, you know, as we looked on the short-term chart, we're in this kind of rising uptrend, but still well beneath that peak here. It's kind of a rising uptrend within a kind of choppy um, longer-term picture. Now you'll notice the. Uh, oh, sorry, I already covered the, the covered the Germany 30 chart, but. Worth quickly skipping back to it briefly, because um, if you look at that chart, pushing right up here, highs of the day today, highest since August. <clears throat> now, if we just look at a more, uh, something a bit more reflective of Europe in general, breaking high today nicely. Um, today is definitely a breakout day through the 200-day moving average on the Euro Stocks 50, or our version of it, the Euro 50 chart. Um, and uh, through the 3,500 3, psychological number, so a breakout on a number of fronts taking place today. Uh, we need a close around these levels for it to be confirmed. But nonetheless, you can see, if we were looking at the Germany 30 chart, that's more kind of up here somewhere, uh, was a Euro 50 down here. Basically, the rest of Europe's lagging behind a bit. To my mind, the reason for that is that um, Germany's uh, DAX index is made up of a large, big, uh, a lot of manufacturers, but largely uh, big exporters. Germany's Europe's biggest exporter, and the euro is dropping ahead of the CCD meeting. So, you know, this is the DAX or the Germany 30, rather, is just disproportionately benefiting because of this um, uh, because of this uh, policy that's about to come up, or looks like it's about to come up from the ECB. We covered indices there, um, actually covered oil, um, but uh, any other markets you want me to look at, please, again, let me know. We're going to um, just uh, in the line of sight here, I think I'm just going to go straight for gold. Now, gold, just on Friday last week, made it down to new fresh five-year lows. There, you may be wondering what this chart is. This is uh, the weekly chart of gold. Now, this trend line's a bit dubious here. I basically really drawn it through the, um, the December 2013 and November 2014 lows, uh, but it does work quite well if you discount this spike in terms of the low here from, from June 2013. Now, <clears throat> we had, uh, you may notice the sort of cyclical nature of um, of gold here in terms of where we put in significant bottoms. We put a significant bottom here in uh, December 2013. It was then November 2014. And here we are um, in, uh, you know, November, nearly December of 2015. So third year in the trot, will we get another bounce in gold? Feasibly. Um, if you go by this trend line, it's now uh, after a few false breakouts here in July, which uh, of course again was the um, interim bottom um, in, uh, in in here in 2013, and also uh, am I scrambling for data? Oh yeah, and also of course this year. Um, so July has been a bit of a sort of midday, or um, the, so it's a bit of a sort of six month slash more importantly 12 month cycle of bottoms here in gold. Um, but we have broken through that that July low here, as well as this this declining trend line through the lows. So the momentum does appear to be speeding up a bit to the downside, and that makes sense in the context of the the Fed raising rates. Um, you know, there's been a lot of geopolitical instability. Gold got a bit of a bounce from that. Um, that's kind of this bounce we're talking about here, but not much. And it's fallen off a cliff again just in the preceding days as soon as that um, that kind of risk came out of the markets. There, I mean, there still is a lot of uh, risk avoidance, um, but it tends to be heading towards uh, government bonds, particularly European government bonds, where we know we're about to get a bunch of stimulus in which uh, central banks can be buying those bonds. So, you know, which would you choose, a safe haven that earns interest? or one that doesn't. Um, admittedly, a lot of Europeans' bonds are actually a negative interest now, but um, still, um, the money seems to be flowing to bond markets, not to gold. Um, what? So trend, uh, there's a weekly chart, but um, you know, if we go short term, unmistakably lower. Uh, I had, a tri they had this triangle pattern drawn in uh, previously on gold, but we've broken, we've broken through that. Uh, was it here that I had it? 
that was a four hour chart. Oh, I had a wedge pattern going on here. Well, it's just worth worth paying attention to the um, the down sloping trend line of that wedge. Um, could prove a bit of bit supportive down at lower levels, uh, but nonetheless, the trend is still clearly down. Silver has actually been holding up well compared to gold. Um, it this is the four hour chart again. It's basically being contained within this down sloping trend line and the multi year lows where it made a little false breakout. Um, when was that last week? Tail end of uh, November, yeah, last week. Um, so, did for one day make an intraday or well, a uh, new, new uh, six year low, but hasn't held it. Um, so what we're looking for is either a close through into multi-year lows to continue the trend, or this proves to be a bottoming pattern in which we get at least an interim bottom and we get a bounce back. I would say towards 15 would be the level people would be targeting. And we covered Brent within the context of the OPEC report. Um, got about seven minutes to go here. Um, so we're just going to dig into the FX pairs for the remainder, but obviously any other products, please let me know. I'm happy to cover those as well. Euro we've looked at. Let's just um, cover it in a bit more detail maybe. So we mentioned that there is the, um, this downward sloping trend line on the um, daily chart. If we look more specifically at the four hour chart, you know, this does appear to be what's kind of containing the action accelerated a bit to the downside, so we haven't actually made it back on the last two bounces. You know, so we're really kind of grinding away into the support without too much bounce. You know, no one really wants to be long Euro at this point, which obviously does present a big contrarian opportunity um, going into this ECB meeting. There is a risk that they disappoint. You know, expectations are built up a fair bit, especially with this talk last week of a two-tiered deposit rate, which basically, without you know, without digging into too much of the details, means they could actually um, cut the deposit rate further into the negative than previously thought if they split it up, where different banks pay different amounts for holding on money on deposit. Um, still, yeah, but in the context of that, those rumours, the, the expectations are high. And so those, uh, you know, the higher expectations, the easier to, to dis disappoint, obviously. So, you know, um, certainly uh, you, you can't deny the downtrend here, but, um, you know, 106 has put, you know, you sort of see it here. It does look like it's kind of given away here. We were acting in this kind of level as a support um, dip through. It seemed to have based out a slightly newer level below about 105.60 now is kind of the new area of support. Um, I think, you know, it's certainly, it'd, be, it'd take a brave soul to be long, I think, before the report, because um, you just, you know, the the downside could be quite substantial. You know, there's certainly, like I mentioned, the, half the intention here is to lower the euro. So do you want to stand in the way of the European Central Bank? It's not that, I would say it's not the, um, you know, it's a brave trade. It's a bit of a hero trade in a way. Um, you know, if you want to be a hero, go for it. But, um, you know, if you want to make kind of more consistent, uh, lower risk, easy money, if you like, um, to my mind, better following the trend. Do, when do we know that trend's broken? Well, this trend line's been fairly fairly reliable. Um, you know, I think a, a break through that and a close above um, could tell us that we're, um, you know, expectations have not been met, and um, uh, maybe the ECB is not doing enough in the eyes of the market, um, or it's already been priced in, and we're going we're to get a bit of a technical bounce. So uh, probably keep an eye on that uh, that declining trend line. Over to cable. Not much to move um, move cable necessarily this week. More just indirect effects. You know, the Bank of England's kind of caught in the middle between the ECB and uh, the Fed. Fed hiking in December potentially, and the ECB adding to stimulus in December. The BOE, um, you know, the economy is in my mind as strong as as the US in terms of the economic data. Maybe even stronger if you look at wages. Um, but, uh, but you know, if you just look at the, the euro-pound chart, which we can just do right now, 
you can understand, given that Europe's our biggest export destination, um, why the Bank of England would be a bit concerned. You know, choo, crash. You know, um, it's, it's the, the pound has appreciated a lot against the pound, uh, against the euro, and against um, other currencies as well. So, the Bank of England don't want to encourage excessive uh, sterling strength, hampering all our exporters, damaging our growth, um, just to try and keep up with the Fed. So I'm kind of skipping around here between charts, uh, but I was saying with um, with cable specifically here, we're in the downslipping channel. Uh, we're obviously at the bottom of the channel, um, and largely that's um, because of the more dovish commentary from the Bank of England recently. Um, we've got we've got uh, Bank of England um, uh, stability review tomorrow, also. A um, uh, financial stability review, also uh, bank stress tests. They don't really necessarily impact on monetary policy, although there is talk that they could be a bit more, uh, you know, they could require the banks to hold more money. Um, and so that would mean they have slightly less money to lend out. So that's, in a way, a bit of a kind of tightening of policy. And so that could be, um, you know, that could be. Um, you know, almost it could almost be a negative for the pound because it kind of weighs on growth a bit, but um, no one's earning any extra interest as they would if they just raised rates. So, um, but here you can see basically, I think this uh, the, the 150 is kind of the support, and that's where, uh, that's right where we are now, right into that uh, round number. Be surprising if uh, we didn't get some sort of bounce back, to my mind, in the area of the 150 down to the bottom of the downsloping trend line here. Clearly, the trend is down, so you're fighting the trend here, but you sort of expect a bit of a bounce back. So maybe treat that as an area of caution for shorts and um, you know maybe an opportunity if we do get a bounce uh, to get short again, because um, I think probably the bias is lower while we're below this 200-day moving average and within this downsloping channel. And below 150 is a bit of a psychological change. Um, to my, they, they, you know, apart from this little low here, um, I, you know, this, I think that would be would be would be kind of out of um, a range mode almost, and almost kind of more into um, a downtrend mode should we get through that 150 level. Yeah, good question about um, yeah dollar Swiss. I mentioned that in my uh, my evening notes um, do, 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 at the end of last week. Um, the, the, the Swiss franc weakened since the dollar since the uh, SMB depegged its currency. Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's you know it's all the same factors involved. Um, the uh, the dollar's rising uh, because everyone expects the Fed to raise rates. Mm -hmm. And the Swiss um, currency is being uh, devalued, and there is a bit of an outside thought process here that maybe the SMB is going to have to do something. They're leaving it a bit late now. The ECB meeting is Thursday, um, but obviously before the ECB first introduced QE, um, the SMB depegged their currency. They, they've got they haven't got as many tools to fight it this time around. Um, they can't really directly take on the European Central Bank in terms of asset purchases. They're just a smaller bank. They've got less reserves. So they, they, you know, they wouldn't win that battle. So to some extent, there's not much they can do, uh, but they could certainly come out with some kind of uh, rhetoric, perhaps, uh, and they can at least um, cut their rates a bit further. Um, and you know, they can actually loosen their policy a bit, so obviously that would just make uh, that would make the Swiss even relatively weaker against the dollar. But um, you know, if we just switch over to Euro Swiss quickly, I would say based on the Euro Swiss rate as it stands, you know the the SMB, the Swiss National Bank, is probably not going to do anything. Um, you know the the Euro has bounced a fair bit back. You know, there was the um, the depegging, and here we are bounced back. Um, you know, from from way below parity, uh, back up to the 1.1 kind of level, which is where we've been kind of hovering around for a while. So, <clears throat> I 
I think the S&P were comfortable here. The question is, I suppose, and maybe this is what the S&P are waiting for. And uh, it, you know, if we do get a big drop in, um, the, uh, you know, if we do have in, a stimulus introduced this week, then uh, if a big drop in this rate, maybe the Swiss will be forced to act. And so you don't necessarily want to fight the ECB by um, by selling Swiss francs, but you know selling Swiss francs against the dollar, yeah, I mean that that makes more sense fundamentally because obviously the Fed's about to tighten. Um, so you know Euro Swiss in itself um, potentially one for shorting um, because given the Euro dollars are already pushed down near that 105 multi-year low handle, this one's obviously no year, nowhere near these these deep peg lows. So more options for shorting maybe, but for going long, you don't necessarily want to go long the euro, given what the ECB's got planned, um, but you could go long dollar, fr dollar Swiss on this breakout. So, yeah. Not to say that the breakout can't fail and we can't drop back down on dollar Swiss. Um, you know, that would make sense in the context of, um, you know, maybe disappointment from the ECB and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, a sort of, um, you know, maybe a weaker jobs number that uh, devalues the dollar, um, that could make that happen. But, you know, general fundamentals, you know, long dollar, short euro, um, long or short Swiss, depending on what the ECB does. So that's about it. We're, we're, we're about two minutes over now, so I'm going to call it a day here. Uh, thanks very much for attending, everyone. Uh, good luck with trading this week. Jasper Law signing out. Mm -hmm.